Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. We're just going to give it another couple minutes before we get started. Let a few more people sign on. Can everybody hear me? I Can anybody hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Jay, can you hear me? I can here hear you. Yep, here we go. Here comes the comments <laughs> for you. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, I think we still may have a few more people signing on, but let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Holly Smith. I'm with GMA. This is our Teach Me Tuesday webinar on overcoming digital marketing overwhelm, what to do when everyone expects you to be everywhere all the time. Um, this is part of a series of virtual trainings we're offering over the next several weeks. So if you would like more information on our upcoming Teach Me Tuesday offerings and our workplace workshop scheduled for next week, please visit our website at mygma.org. Now let me introduce today's speaker. Jay Vix is a serial entrepreneur. He started JVI Mobile Marketing as a side hustle in 2012 and over the last eight years has turned it into a full-time agency focused on consulting, coaching, and fulfillment. In 2016, Jay became a CDMP, which is a Certified Digital Marketing Professional from DigitalMarketer.com. In 2020, Jay and his growing team created the HowTo.Agency website, which is still being developed. This resource is for small business owners who want to learn how to be better at digital marketing or training their staff for that purpose. Jay conducted the first webinar we offered in our series last month on the, the Lens Method for social media, and we're pleased to bring him back today. He's excited to work with GMA to help his fellow members grow their businesses. If you would like to have Jay teach or speak with your organization, please let, to, let him know. Thank you for being here, Jay. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Holly. Um, I'm really excited to, uh, to get started and say hi to everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put us into full screen mode now. We good? All right. Really, that that was just so that you don't have to you don't have to look at my Yankee hat uh, for the whole time we do this. Um, uh, anyway, I hope everybody's doing really well, and I hope everybody is getting. Well, let, let's ask a question. Uh, first of all, I'm sure everybody can hear me. Um, put a put put a yes or a me in the comments if you are way more comfortable working from home now than you were 30 days ago? Like how many of you have adjusted well to uh, meetings and webinars and web conferences? And <laughs> good, good, that's awesome. Everybody, everybody seems to be much more comfortable. And it's, it's funny, um, people ask me all the time, they're like, how much, you know, how are you doing with this whole quarantine and working from home. And you know what? In, in 2015, JVI Mobile Marketing, my digital marketing agency, I went full time with the agency and I've always worked from a home office. So when people are like, well, how are you doing with, with quarantine and working from home? I'm like, great. I've been doing this for you know five years already. Um, 
And uh, it, it's actually, it, it really is a joy for me when I get to go work from a, a coffee shop or a co-working space or, or just somewhere else um, that I can't do. Uh, but, uh, but, but this has all been very normal to me. So I'm glad that it's, uh, I think the landscape has shifted a little bit and maybe when things start to go back to normal, maybe some of you would, would, would be happy to work from home or at least do more virtual meetings. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to talk to you today. Last, last time we, we spoke, um, a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of the same names and faces and I'm really excited that some of you were on our lens webinar where we talked about the different types of things to uh, post on your social media channels and what channels to be on. And I have, <clears throat> I have the slides from that and I, I believe I have a replay of that webinar on video. So if anybody wants that afterwards, you can always email me, um, j at jbimobile.com. And I would be happy to, uh, to, to share that with you. But today we're gonna, it's not a digital marketing institute, it's a Teach Me Tuesday. So I didn't really wanna go into the nuts and bolts of, of too much, you know, digital marketing strategy or, you know, tactics or, or ways to grow your business using digital marketing. I find that one of the things a lot of people ask me all the time is, gosh, there's so much, I don't even know where to start. And they get so overwhelmed because everyone tells them they need to be everywhere all the time on all these different platforms. So that's that's what we're going to dive into today is just how to deal with that, how to overcome it, and how to how to maybe simplify it a little bit better. So first, we're going to talk a little bit about me. I, I somebody had asked me last time about 20 minutes into the presentation, what was your name again? Or you had to tell me your name. Um, my name is Jay Vix. I live in McLeansville, just northeast of Greensboro. I'm, I'm right down. Uh, somebody's saying that their audio keeps going out. I'm going to try to fix that a little bit here. Hold on one second. Hopes that it, I don't know what I can do, but let me just try something real quick. All right. I hope it gets a little bit better. I just, I just replugged in my microphone. Um, I apologize if the audio keeps going out. I don't see any any errors or issues, but um, hopefully on the replay, it'll be good. Uh, if not, you can always ask me questions. I will say one thing. Uh, it could be an internet issue, number one. Number two, at the end of this, before I forget, uh, everyone is going to get a PDF that is 57 pages long. Uh, this PDF is going to include a checklist that summarizes everything we went over today. It's going to have a Q&A on digital marketing. It's going to have misconceptions about digital marketing, and everyone's going to get a copy of these slides. So I hope that'll help for anyone who might be having audio or internet issues. Um, okay, back to the presentation. So my name is Jay Vix. Uh, I live I live up in McLeansville. I've been in the Greensboro area for just over two years. Uh, before that, it was three years in my wife's hometown of South Boston, Virginia. For three years and before that was uh, since 2002 to 2015, 13 years in Wilmington, but originally I'm from New Jersey. Uh, so I got a couple pictures here. Uh, one is my wife and I, uh, we just happened to catch a catch a good shot of us on a, on a date, one, uh, a lunch date a while back. Uh, the other one is us on the Polar Express out in Bryson City, I believe. Uh, with our daughter Mackenzie, who's four and a half now, and she'll let you know it. And then the bottom two are Juno and Gemma, and they are in quarantine right now. I have to put them up. Um, if anybody has ever had a conversation with me on the phone, uh, those dogs will lay around and sleep all day long and never move until I open my mouth to get on a phone call or a meeting, and then they are all over it. So I always have to say, hold on, and I got to go let them out. And I know I know Heather Noblet, who's who works with me. She's on this webinar. She's probably laughing right now because um, she knows it's true. But these are Juno and Gemma. I like to call them the the sixty plus pound lap dogs. Uh, they think that uh, they they are definitely they belong on the bed. They belong on the chair. They belong in my lap. So um, anyway, that's that's a little bit about uh, me and a little bit about our agency and our partnerships. Uh, as Holly alluded to, I am I was one of the first 250 people in the world that became a certified digital marketing professional when it was a brand new designation in 2016. I was in the inaugural course through digitalmarketer.com. 
And the way I equate it is kind of like being a CPA or an MD or a CFP or any other designation you might have in your industry. Uh, I, I hold that for digital marketing. We work with uh, several different agencies to help us with fulfillment, whether it's Facebook ads, SEO, directory listings, uh, advertising, chatbot marketing. I'm also a direct response copywriting specialist. That was through Digital Marketer as well. So we try to gain accreditation and partnerships wherever possible. I think it really helps us establish us. Um, and also, you know, digital marketing is always changing. So we constantly have to stay on the forefront and learn as much as possible. So. All right. What are we going to go over today? Well, um, we have uh, we have quite a few things. Uh, the good news is each of these is only uh, one or two slides. Uh, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about going going too deep. We are going to talk about uh, being overwhelmed and coming up with a plan and some strategies, how to kind of manage expectations and not worry when things, you know, when you don't hit your goals, um, how to celebrate when things go, go great. Um, let's see, uh, create, how to create time. A lot of people say, I can't find the time for digital marketing. So we're going to talk about that and then just how to be consistent. And then when all else fails, when it, when you need to know that it's time to uh, to maybe just you know get professional help, whether it's consultations or you know hiring an outside agency or just just finding somebody that you can talk to. So so section one, stop and regroup. All right. So if you feel like you're really overwhelmed, uh, a lot of business owners make the mistake that that they they try to carry out every every single digital marketing method under the sun. Like they, you know, they're, oh, I've got to be on Facebook. I've got to be on Instagram. I've got to be on Pinterest. I have to do email marketing. I have to spend money with ads. I want to do Google pay-per-click. Oh, my SEO. I've got to take care of my SEO. I've got, you know, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And that is where the overwhelm starts. So if, if, if that feels like any of you, let's stop right now. I've seen this meme going around on Facebook. Breathe in for the count of four, hold for the count of four, and exhale at the count of four, and repeat. Like, just let's work on developing a plan of action to move forward and reach your goals. We don't, I always say, like, we the one, one, one method. We, we want to find one, one uh, strategy, one funnel to get us to that one goal. And let's um, maybe, maybe, uh, just try to focus on on just a little bit instead of trying to bite off more than, than you could uh, chew there. So here's a couple ways to do that. Uh, take get up get up and walk away, right? Um, clear your mind. Take a five minute break. Go step outside. Today is a perfect day to go step outside. It's not always a perfect day to go step outside, but today, in the Greensboro area. Uh, as most of you know, it looks like it looks. I'm looking out my window. It looks like a perfect day to go step outside. Clear your mind. I can't tell you how many times I've been stuck on a task or a project, or um, when I'm working on a website, it might be a piece of code, uh, and I just get so inundated and I get so frustrated and worked up over something. And I can't tell you how many times I've actually gotten up, either went to sleep because it was nighttime, or just walked away or took another phone call or went into a meeting. And when I came back, I had the issue figured out in like three seconds. It was like, it was almost like I was looking at the problem with a new set of eyes. Uh, work in, in short bursts. I do this all the time. Uh, solid work, take a break, repeat. Mine is usually not 20 minutes. I, for some reason, my short bursts are like an hour, but I'll work for an hour and then I'll take a five minute break. And I'll, I'll do that often. It'll be either a phone call or I'll check Facebook. I'll just do something else other than, other than just work. And I repeat, if you, if you really want to come up with a good plan of action, I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys all in on a little secret today. There's this really neat website and it's called Google. And there's another one that you may or may not have heard of. It's called YouTube. I'm obviously kidding. Uh, Google and YouTube 
uh, you all know what Google and YouTube are. That is the way to learn the basics on anything. If you want to learn anything about digital marketing or SEO or content management or search engine, I mean, uh, social media management, Facebook ads, Google ads, uh, if you want to just learn the basics, you can Google how to create an action plan for email marketing. And just you'll get thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of results. So definitely uh, use Google, use YouTube, watch videos and learn the basics. If you if you're really trying to come up with a plan of action for for your uh, for your business. But again, I want to reiterate that trying to do everything is the quickest way to overwhelm. So just pick pick two or three strategies, only work on those. And that strategy may be, you know, one funnel. So then you work at how do I drive traffic to my business? Then how do I convert traffic? And then how do I do repeat business? And you could do one strategy for each, uh, each thing and, and develop an action plan and then just attack that, that one particular funnel. We don't need to, you don't need to try to do every digital marketing tactic under the sun. Janet, I see that your comment about logging back in with no audio. Um, I don't. I don't know. Other people say they can hear me, so I, I apologize. I, I don't know if there's anything I can do to fix it for you. But uh, if when we get the recording, uh, that'll be a, a, a MP4 video format with audio. So I'm hoping that maybe I can send that to you later, and you could go back and and hear everything that I've been saying. Uh, you may not even be able to hear me telling you that right now, so you will on the recording. <laughs> um, anyway, um, let's see. Creating a digital marketing action plan. So why would we create an action plan for digital marketing? I, I guess why would you why would you create an action plan for uh, traditional marketing? Why would you create an action plan or a procedure or a process for how to open your business in the morning or how to close it at night. Why would you have an action plan? I mean, why would we have an action plan for everything? Because they work. So, and it helps us to get clear on what we want to achieve. So if, if we can come up with a plan, a realistic plan, it'll help us get to our goals. And it's that that's kind of, um, we kind of use this every day. You know, we, we use action plans every day. So digital marketing should be no different. We should definitely have a plan. But how do I create the digital marketing action plan? Well, here's the five steps. The first thing to do is make sure you know your avatar. Well, what the heck is an avatar? Not the blue, the blue, uh, blue uh, things that look like us from the James Cameron movie. Uh, some of you may know it as a buyer persona. Really, it's just who are you? Who are your customers? Do you know who your customers are? Do you know what they have in common? Do you know what they read? Do you know what they watch? Do you know where they hang out online? Uh, do you know what what uh, what job title they hold at at their you know at work? Do you know what their income levels are? Uh, hobbies, interests, magazines. You know, try to gather as much. Survey your customers. Ask, um, ask, ask your customers for, you know, why they shopped with you, uh, why they're doing business with you. Ask them what the best part, what they like most about your business. You know, just research, gather as much information about your customers as you possibly can. Get it all down and you'll have a really good, clear understanding as to where you need to go to reach them. Uh, next would be set a goal. What do you want to achieve from your digital marketing efforts? You know, do you want more traffic? Do you want more people coming through your door? Do you want more people just to find out who you are? You know, people say, I love the saying, they're like, oh, you got to put yourself out there. Well, where is there? What is, what is there? Where, where, where is there? Um, you know, I want to get my name out there. How many of you say that? Raise, tell me, say yes if you're guilty of saying, well, I just want to get my name out there, right? Just type yes in the comments. Um, I'd love to see how many of you have said to get my name out there. Um, where is there, right? Where is there? Know where you want to get your name out to. Decide on the marketing channel. So what, what do you want 
knowing that where and knowing where you want to get is going to help you decide on the marketing channel. So if you know where your customers hang out online and you know where there is, well, then you'll be able to identify, do I want to focus on social media? Do I want paid social media or do I want organic social media? Do I want an email market? Do I have a customer list or do I need to buy a list or or work with a third party to put an email in front of a cold audience? Um, you know, can I can I do content marketing? How am I going to distribute it? You know, am I going to do press releases? Uh, you know, so decide on those marketing channels. Again, just pick a couple and you'll know by knowing your customer, you'll know where there is. When I talk about getting your name out there, you'll know where that is. And then plan out your actions. What are you going to do each day, each week, each month? Put it on a calendar. We have a social media software that we use. It's, it's actually ours. We, we, we sell it. It's free, but we have a, a paid version. I talked about it on the last webinar. For social media calendaring, it's called MySoPro. And you can actually schedule out all your social media posts uh, for, for as far out as you want to go. You could do it for the whole month. You could do it for a whole year. You could do it for a week. Um, but you can, you can actually set that content out. So if you were going to write a blog, a blog post or an article for content for your website, and then you wanted to share that out, a lot of people are just going to be like, hey, I put up a new blog post. Here it is on Facebook one time. Well, you probably need to share that you know, 50 to 75 to 100 to 200 times over the course of the next six to 12 months, if the content stays relevant, um, make sure that you're driving people back to your website. You can't, you know, everybody says, oh, I'm just going to put it out there, you know, put it out there. And you put it out there one time, nobody's really paying attention. Um, so plan out those actions, you know, set things up on repeat. And then find out if it's working. Uh, put a yes or a no in the comment box. Uh, I appreciate the people that are interacting here. I'm trying to make it as interactive as possible. Number five says closely monitor results. T uh, put a yes or a no if you actually use either Google Analytics or some type of tracking or reporting tool for your digital marketing. Just yes, yes if you do, no if you don't. Yes, 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 one no. All right, awesome. Look, if you're not tracking and if you're not testing and measuring, how do you really know if it's working or not? You know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of tools out there. We can, we can, and, and then we have to know what we can measure. So that, that kind of gets into the weeds as far as tactics and strategies, but, but look at your results. Is your traffic going up or is your traffic going down? Did the blog post traffic get, you know, get traffic? Where did it come from? You know, that the Google analytics would be a whole nother course in itself, but, but track things Let, let's just let's use the example of postcard mailing let's say you mailed out a postcard right and you told people you have to bring this postcard in to get the coupon you know this postcard is your coupon or let's say you were doing text message marketing which is something that, that we offer you know um you might get that text when the company sends out a text it'll say bring bring your phone show this text to your server for 15 percent off right well, track that. You need to track that stuff. That's how you monitor results. So it may not always be Google Analytics, but the one thing that I've always had a hard time with, are, and I think for branding, you know, like something like a billboard ad or a magazine ad are good from a traditional standpoint, but you don't really have uh, a way to really track them unless you put like a special phone number in the ad or you have some type of uh code or something you need them to say when they call in to order. But there should always be some type of direct response trackable offer uh, whenever you're doing anything, whether whether online or off, traditional or digital. All right. Now, how do we prioritize our digital marketing strategies? Well, first, we kind of alluded to it in the in the last section. Um, we want to figure out which strategies are going to be best for your type of business and then focus on those. So we already talked about finding out where your customers hang out online, right? So if we find out exactly where our target audience is, we can prioritize our marketing in those places. So as an example, if you know that 
your audience is on Facebook. And I, I'm going to give you a hint here. There's 2.1 billion users on Facebook uh, that your audience is on Facebook. They may just not be looking for work right there. But but let's just say that, um, you know, how do we how do we find out where they are? So if you ask your question, if you ask your customers, uh, maybe with a questionnaire, find out what sites they're on. Do they use Facebook? Um, how do we um, uh, how do we uh, know if our customers are looking at Facebook for work or they're looking at LinkedIn while they're at work? You know, once we once we find out where what social media platforms are on, we can we can definitely know to target them on those platforms. But then we can say, do our do our customers did we reach them via email? You know, maybe email is a good strategy. There are lots of services out there that that have opt-in email lists that will email on your behalf. We know because we we outsource to a company that does it. And you know, we could we could find you a list of up to 150 million opt-in emails with 700 data points. So we could, if you know anything about your customer, we can find people that look just like your customer, business or consumer, and we can send an email out on your behalf. Uh, to you know, with your with details of your offer, so that might be a strategy to focus on. Um, but if we don't if we don't know what we're focusing on or where our customers are, we're really going to get we're going to get stuck. So again, it comes back down to that avatar. But at the very least, um, uh, prioritize your website. Sorry, guys, I thought I had moved the slide open, but I didn't. I was looking at uh, my notes. Um, Prioritize your website. That's that's definitely a key. If you're looking for something to do right now, go back through your website. Have your customers go through your website. Um, ask people if they saw you on your website. But make sure that it's very nice looking, user friendly. It's clear. People can navigate it. That it works best on mobile phones. You actually designing a website these days should be mobile responsive should be mobile friendly and it should have been designed for mobile first because that's how Google is going to rank you. And it should con contain relevant up-to-date content. We're actually working on the JV. We're working on a, a couple of things right now. We have, we have three websites and jvimobile.com has been my website since 2012. And we've done so many different changes and iterations to it over the years. And last year, I put out jvimobilemarketing.com, and then this year, as Holly mentioned, we put out howto.agency. And what I realized is I needed to have a purpose and a plan for each website. What are they going to talk about? What are they going to do? Is it clear? You know, and for for so long, and it only happened because I had been throwing everything onto jvimobile.com, and I realized that. There's nothing wrong with having a couple different websites if they have a clear purpose. So jvimobile.com is becoming just my consultant website. It's, it's going to be more about me and strategy and how we can help people. jvimobilemarketing.com is going to be our products and services and the, the, the individualized things that we can offer to people. And then howto.agency is going to be things like this. Where are we speaking? Where are we consulting? How are we... How are we teaching, you know, courses, online tools, resources, tips, tricks, blogs? Um, and we're separating that out because what we realized is when we look at prioritizing our website, it was a mishmash or a hodgepodge or any other funny word I can <laughs> come up with right now um, of things that were not clear. It's, it's kind of like spaghetti. We, we kind of try to do everything in one site. And and over the years, I feel like we've, we've that's kind of, it, it hasn't been clear and congruent and, and uh, you know, very, very professionally visually, professional visually. And so we're working on that right now, even even uh, ourselves. And then we'll, we'll look at the ways that we're going to promote and market each of those websites. Um, but ultimately, just remember that no matter what your digital marketing strategy is, make sure to always remember that your website is the backbone of that strategy. The goal of all your digital marketing is going to be driving customers to your door. And that door online is your website. 
So if you want to drive more people to your door or convert more customers, you need to make sure you're driving them to the website um, because that's what people are looking for. They're looking for your you online. So I hope that makes sense. Everybody with me so far? How many people have uh, raised your hand if you've fallen asleep? All right, obviously, nobody's going to raise their hand if they've fallen asleep. I'm kidding. Um, Chris asked, we are using Sprout Social currently. Thoughts? Amy, thank you for humoring me um, with your emoji. Um, uh, so Sprout Social is good. Uh, it's I've used I used it a few years ago. I remember it being expensive. Um, my SoPro, which is ours, uh, you're free to use for free uh, for as long as you want. Connect all your social media networks that you can to it, and it will allow you to find content, create content, create images, edit images, uh, and schedule out all your posts and and we call it freemium. It's it's free forever, but there is a paid version that gives you a little bit more. Um, but Sprout Social, I remember it being about sixty dollars a month. Um, but it, but I also remember it, it doing a lot as far as monitoring and numbers and metrics. So it may be it may be good for your business. I'd have to talk to you, you know, at, off of this. Uh, just to learn more about your business and what you're going to use it for. But, but Chris, it's, it's a good program. It's been around a while. So that's going to be how I'm going to answer, answer that question. So, all right. This is probably my favorite, uh, my favorite slide uh, series on here, Stop Shooting for Perfection. You guys all know that, that saying, perfection is the enemy of good. I hope I didn't just butcher that. I think I'm right. Perfection is the enemy of good, right? So nothing is perfect in marketing, all right? So here's what I always tell people. People say, oh, I want to spend $100 a day on this Facebook ad. I'm, I'm using an actual actual customer right now, an actual client of mine. I'm not going to, I'm going to protect this confidentiality, even though he's, he's not even on here. But I have a client who said, yeah, we were told we should spend $100 a day to run this ad. And I said, okay, why? I said, because that's what they said works for other businesses. I said, okay, what are they basing that on? And why would you start at $100 a day with digital marketing campaign if you can, if you can, before you test and measure it yourself in your market with your customers? I always say, let's, let's say we test an ad a paid ad, Google ad, Facebook ad. Let's let's if we're testing something, and let's say we're getting, um, let's say we're getting uh, two dollars a click, right? Let's say let's say we're our metric right now. We're getting a click for two dollars, and it takes us ten clicks to get a sale. I'm just going to try to do that easy, right? So. $2 a click, 10 clicks to get a sale. It's costing us $20 to get a customer, right? I mean, there's, we, do, we just do the basic math on that, right? So we, we know that that's not perfect. We know it's good, but what we want to try to do then is find out, well, if we, if we got it at $2 a click, can we get it down to $1.50 a click or $1.90 a click or $1.95 a click? You know, because when you, when you, if you got it to, let's say you got it to a dollar fifty a click and it was those same 10 clicks, well, now it's costing you $15 to get a sale. So, so now your ROI is improving and that's, that's marketing. I mean, that's, that's testing and measuring. So it's always about trying to tweak and knowing that you're not going to be perfect. Uh, I've used this analogy several times in the past. But if any of you like know much about baseball, that happens to be like my favorite sport. So I'm going through major baseball withdrawals this first month that we haven't had it. Um, I know I have a basketball analogy on the screen, but there too, if you if you if you know that you're just shooting low and you're missing, then you have to wor just work on trying to shoot a little higher, and eventually you'll get it in the net. But my analogy with baseball is that. Hall of Fame baseball players, the greatest baseball players that have ever lived, right? They're in the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, right? They, every time, every 10 times 
they got up to bat. For the most part, on, on average, they got out seven out of those 10 times. They only got a hit three out of 10 times. 30% of the time, they got a hit, right? If we're just taking a 300 average. The, any baseball purist in here right now is going to want to yell at me after this later because there are people who didn't even hit three. No, it's a whole different story. Um, I hope you're just following me, though. But if you hit 300 for your career, if you hit 30% for your career, you're you're a darn good baseball player, right? And and uh, that to, but but to me, if you look at perfection, I mean, when we were in school, we had to get like ninety percent right to get an A, right? So we always look at this like the closest to a hundred percent is our benchmark, is our is our grading for success. But but you look at a sport where guys get paid twenty million dollars a year, and their success rate is is thirty to forty percent. Chris, you're absolutely right. All right, we'll talk later. Um, so, so in marketing is the same way. You can, you can, if you're running marketing campaigns and you're looking for nine or ten campaigns to be perfect and to make you millions of dollars, and you can achieve that, like why would anybody be doing anything else? Like if you could, if you could get, you know, um, a whole lot of money for for as little as possible right away. Um, you know, that formula, nobody be on this webinar. We'd all just be out there making millions of dollars. Perfection doesn't exist, but if you test and measure, you can get really good from tweaking and going forward. I hope, I hope that that slide makes sense. And my analogy made sense to all of you. Um, there's always going to be something you can improve upon. There's always going to be an area that didn't quite hit the mark. So just continuing to try to improve. Because uh, paralysis by analysis will happen. You'll try to make this whole campaign perfect. You want the most perfect email. You want the most perfect Facebook ad. You want the most perfect this or that. And, and really, it can bring things to a standstill. You could actually go nowhere because you're so busy trying to be perfect. So just make things as good as you possibly can and then run with it. And then learn from your failures. So I'm, I own a marketing agency. I charge people thousands of dollars. To work with me and all the best I can tell them is that I'm going to do the best I can and we're going to continually try to improve on that. But people say, oh, well, how much money am I going to make if I spend a thousand dollars with you? I don't know. Spend a thousand dollars with me because you like my plan of action. You like the fact that you don't have to do it yourself. You like the fact that that I know what I'm doing. And you like the fact that I'm going to test and measure and I'm going to try to get you the most money back for your dollar, period. Right. And you should be thinking about that in your business, too, when you think about what, what you should be doing for marketing. Um, come up with a plan and then just go for it and then learn from your mistakes. It's my favorite slide in this whole presentation. It's all downhill from here, guys. If you were bored to this point, I feel terrible for you. All right. How to establish realistic expectations in your digital market? Well, if you're trying to shoot at a basketball net that's, you know, 40 feet high instead of 10 feet high, that's you're setting yourself up for failure. If you think you're going to go out and spend for every hundred dollars you spend in, in digital marketing, you're going to make fifty thousand dollars starting week one. I would say, well, go do it. What are you waiting for? Right. Um, you look at metrics like, you know, like I was talking about before, how, how much, how much does it cost me to get a click and how many clicks is it taking to get somebody to get to my website and how many website visits is it going to take to get somebody to fill out the lead capture form on my webpage and how many lead capture forms on my webpage are going to turn into a sales call and then how many of those sales calls turn into a call? Well, I just gave you like five or six steps to a, to a digital marketing sale. Uh, or a process or a funnel. And if we don't know those numbers and can't work backwards, um, then we're never going to be able to really uh, come up with realistic results because we're not going to know where we need to improve. So let's just say like um, make, make your investment, right? And look at it as a long-term strategy and don't expect overnight success from your efforts. Because digital marketing requires 
like a lot of consistent action. Like we have to do things consistently, sustain it um, over time. And I don't care if you're talking about SEO, if you're talking about social media, email marketing, anything else. Just invest in digital marketing and then try to try to come up with realistic results. What what could a realistic result be? Find your benchmark. You know, find your benchmark. All right. Um, my benchmark is five dollars a click. All right. Well, then expect five dollars a click. Find out how many clicks it's going to take to get a sale. You know, and then you will you won't be setting yourself up by failure by expecting two dollars a click. You'll actually be working your when you when you get to four dollars and ninety cents. You'll you'll be looking at wow, I'm I'm getting better. I'm getting we're we're this is successful. And then just set short term goals. You know, instead of having five dollars a click and trying to get it to two dollars a click tomorrow night. Um, how about, you know, by tomorrow or by next week, let's try to get it down to $4 and 75 cents or $4 and 50 cents. I'm using a lot of numbers in this because that's all marketing really comes down to for us. It's, it's testing and measuring. Um, it sound like a, a broken record, but set, set realistic expectations. Let, let's say you, you want to get, um, you want to send emails out to your customers. Uh, right now, maybe you're doing it once every month or once every two months. Right. And you say, I want to send an email out to my customers every week. Well, if you go out and just try to do it right away without knowing all your content, it's unrealistic. You don't have that plan. So you're setting yourself up for failure and you're not going to be able to send out an email once a week. But if you can come up with your content plan ahead of time and know what you want to say, not only can you get to the point where you can send emails out once a week, but the expectate the you're, you're establishing realistic expectations, and you have a, a plan of action, and you might even be able to automate the whole thing, and then you you're sending emails out once a week without having to send the emails out once a week. They might just be going automatically because you you set it up right. So there's a lot of ways you can incorporate technology into that as well. Think long term. Invest. Just a little recap on this. Prioritize. Um, Educate others to have realistic expectations and then set achievable short term goals along the way. All right. Everybody with me? Give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up or smiley faces. That's all I want to see right now. Thumbs up or smiley faces if you're still with me. Smiley face. All right. Thumbs up, thumbs up, smiley face. Okay, cool. All right. Awesome. Well, I'm going to keep going. We're, we're, uh, we're a little more than uh, halfway to, to question and answers. Um, all right, cool. Staying focused with your initiatives. All right. Focus is key in reaching your marketing goals and improving your strategies going forward. So here are five tips for staying focused with initiatives. One, create a schedule. Set your tasks. I'm going to tell you about something I just got. Let me, I'm going to put myself back on camera for a minute. I want to show you guys something. All right, let me put you on camera. Um, Holly, you're going up with me here because I don't know that I could change that. So, um, all right, hold on a second here. Oh, good. Now she turned the camera off. Cool. All right. So let me see if I can get this close. Um, let me actually, I think I can might be able to make myself bigger real quick. There we go. All right. Everybody see this is Rocket Book Fusion, right? So this is called a Rocket Book. This, raise, uh, t type a yes in the comments if you use a rocket book or have heard of rocket book i don't know i want to kind of gauge the audience how many people know i think rock yes i want one no yes yes no mix okay great i just got one of these recently and I'll put my slides back up here just let me see my big big mug all over the screen here all right so no and a question mark i'm going to talk about rocket book real quick creating a schedule so what a rocket book allows you to do is for me, the reason I got one was somebody told me about it actually, but I was talking on a, uh, uh, an interview that I was doing and I was saying, I love to take notes. I love to actually write in a notebook. Like I, I love use, putting pen to paper. It helps me remember things. It helps me just do things. I, I, my desk is full of paper though. I write notes and then they end up everywhere. I got it all over the place. And I was talking about this and I'm like, but I don't, you know, I carry a notebook around and, and then I have these old notebooks. So what a rocket book allows you to do is you can write with an ink pen. It's a special pen. It's an erasable pen. You can write in this book and the rocket book has this special paper. 
And what you do, you get this microfiber cloth. Let me, let me go back to camera again. Hold on. All right. So I got this cloth. It's a rocket book cloth. And I write notes, right? And then after I'm done, I take my phone out with the rocket book app. It scans that page. It uploads it to my Google Drive or Dropbox or to my client folder or file, wherever I want it to go. It puts it right there. I wet one corner of this little microfiber clutch and I wipe my page clean, completely clean. And then I dry it with the other side of the microfiber cloth. And then I start writing on all of it again. Game changer. Game changer. So anyway, the reason I started telling you about the rocket book is because in this particular version that I got, it has a to-do list, a project task list. It has grid papers. It has calendars. It has objective. It has like an action plan. It has all these different types of pages, ideas, and how to rate them and go to the next step. Um, you can order it from. I don't. I make no money. I don't know. I wish I was an affiliate right now, but I think it's getrocketbook.com. Um, but going back to staying focused with your initiatives, creating a schedule. You can create your schedule. Uh, by writing out your tasks in your rocket book and then staying on track with your goals. And whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, you can, you can save it or you could just erase it like a whiteboard. It's like having a whiteboard in, on, a, on a book, but you can stay on track with your goals and your tasks and, and, uh, and create your schedule with your initiatives. Uh, do one thing at a time, focus on one thing at a time. Right. And, and then just keep working on that task until it's completed. This is, it really is. Uh, you're welcome, Amy. There's, there's nothing worse than having five unfinished tasks. I hate it when I go through a whole day and I don't complete my tasks. Um, look, we all try to multitask and do everything at once. And people have said, oh, I can multitask. And, and I, you know, all this other stuff. I'm not one of them. I cannot multitask. I, I, I have a hard time doing two things at once. If I'm on a phone call and I'm trying to write down notes and the other person's talking, whatever they're saying while I'm writing goes completely out the window. I have a hard time, I have a hard time even doing that. So uh, focus on one thing. Ashley, you're right. It is a misnomer. It's, it's like impossible to multitask. Uh, just focus on a task and just do it. Set your goals and be realistic. Mm -hmm. Take your breaks, it's kind of a recap, and then recognize when help is needed. Seek services of a specialist, digital marketing agency, or maybe hire a new member. If you're a small business, this is the best part. If you're a small business, as simple as asking a question on an online forum and receiving advice are good. Because we do a free Q&A, and I'm not selling you anything, it's a free Q&A. But we do free Q&As and consultations all the time. You don't if you're stuck with digital marketing and you need help with a particular idea topic or you don't know where to go, most agencies are happy. Well, maybe some aren't. I don't know. Most agencies are happy with um, just getting on a, on a phone call and, or, or just email uh, back and forth or text and just trying to help you through it. Um, and, and not worrying about, you know, you don't have to spend 20, 25, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars a year uh, to hire an agency or pay, you know, 70 thousand dollars a year to have somebody, a dedicated, you know, employee come on that, that does digital marketing full time. Um, maybe it's just that, you know, you just get short term help. I know we offer strategy sessions all the time to business owners that want to work with us. And you know it's sixty to ninety minutes. It's it's real. You you come away with a ton of stuff. I charge two hundred and fifty bucks for my time and my brain, and I do them all the time. And people, when they're done, people have a strategy, and they're like, okay, I think I can go start tackling this myself. It's like, well, good. I'm glad you didn't have to spend fifty thousand dollars, you know. And I at least can, can help you, you know, help you break it down with with some ways to stay focused and some some actionable strategies to move forward. We do it all the time for people. So anyway, um, so just, just try to try to just take a step back and, and a deep breath. All right. So here we go. Celebrate your accomplishments. 
if you were getting five dollars a click and you got it down to four dollars a click have a party right you're saving lots of money keep yourself motivated how many people get more motivated when you can give your you know or somebody gives you a pat on the back or 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 celebrate something great that happened you know like if you i don't want to say get a raise but like if you if you um if you do something really good at work or something is something works right it's a great way to mot to to motivate get, get that encouragement that you need and, and keep you motivated and keep you growing so uh, so so keep keep celebrating all those accomplishments in in your in your business and in your life um if you hit a sales goal you hit a quota celebrate you know oh, gosh i used to work in sales and it was it it was fun when i hit my quota it was awesome and i i did celebrate i was like yes i got my quota it was better when i got over quota or was on the leaderboard but you know what always stunk about being in those types of sales was that the first day of the next month i was back at zero um and i had to start all over again and that was tough but if i could celebrate those accomplishments and have something to move forward with them use it as the encouragement to go forward like yes i just did it and i'm going to do it again or better yet finding a recurring source of revenue so that you know you can kind of when you when you start the next month you have a base a base salary to go with um that's even better but focusing on your accomplishments will definitely change your mindset make guys make it a big deal make it a big deal when you when you accomplish something heck you make it through your task list in a day if you had five tasks and you got through it celebrate have a drink go outside do something um and and definitely if you have you can't achieve your goals if you haven't set any goals so set goals and then go after it and your goal may be those five tasks today my goal is to get done with these five things today my wife always talks about the list in her head She's got lists constantly. She's like, I have a list in my head constantly. It's always growing. It's always changing. It's always in my head. I got a list. And I'm like, I wish I could see what's in your head for this list. And then she gets mad at me because I should know what's what's on this list. But um, but but yeah, so if we if we have a list and I write mine down in my rocket book and I write my list of five things and I get those five things done, I've achieved my goal. And uh, I, I need to rem always remember to celebrate that. So goals don't have to be money related. It could be could be just task related. Um, I want to get the the front porch painted this week, right? So if I do it, well, we'll have we'll celebrate. We'll 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 celebrate, and a lot of it will be satisfaction. So in anything, I think now I'm now I'm like your life coach over here, guys. I'm not trying to be, but I'm supposed to be on digital marketing. I'll stay focused as I as I look around my house and think about what needs to get done or what's in my wife's head. Um, cool. Keep moving. I always get the question. I don't have time for this digital marketing stuff. I wear too many hats. I I got to take care of payroll. I got to open. I got to close. I've got bookkeeping. Uh, I've got I've got to be the manager. I've got to train employees. I've got to get rid of an employee or two. Uh, I've got to get this. How, what am I gonna What am I gonna do this digital marketing stuff? And I can't afford to hire somebody. But I got I got to get this stuff done, right? If you don't invest the proper time into your campaigns, you will lose sight of what you're working towards. So I'm gonna give you four tips to help you make time, right? One. Again, set specific goals and actions. Write them down. Go get a rocket book or just your notebook or just a piece of paper that you're not going to lose. Um, write down the, the actions you need to take to hit your goals. And then set aside the time. I use Google Calendar for everything. Uh, when people book an appointment with me, I have a, a, a service that I use. It's called Book Like a Boss. And when people go on my calendar and they click click my calendar and they book like a 30 minute or a 60 minute session with me, it actually syncs up with my Google Calendar and it blocks me. And if I have something that I need to do, like take my daughter to school daycare, or if I have to um uh, if I just make a, an appointment with a client or if I have a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment 
or you know, I need to be somewhere. I always block that time on my Google Calendar, and this way I don't double book myself. And I have clients that are like, can't you know? I always give them the link. I'm like, just book a time with me through this link. And it sounds so informal or formal, I should say. It sounds so formal. And people are like, um, can't I just tell you and you put it on your calendar? And I'm like, look, please put just click this link. It takes two seconds and it it blocks my calendar so that I can focus on you. I can focus on what your needs are. I can help you. Um, you know, and it's the only way I promise you that I won't double book myself. And the point of me telling you that is because if you're going to set aside some time each week for digital marketing, let's say I'm going to work on, um, let's see, let's Tom Polaris in here. Let's pick on Tom because I know Tom. Everybody knows Tom. So let's say Tom is a client of mine and I'm working with Tom and let's say I'm helping him with, um, with a page on his website, right? I'm going to, I'm working on this page on his website, uh, to help him book more vacation packages. He's a travel agent, right? So <clears throat> what I, what I do, and I do this for clients all the time is I'll say, okay, Wednesday, I'm going to, I want to, I want to spend two hours and just focus on Tom's project. So I'll go into my Google calendar and I will block that time, work on Tom's project for whatever two hours, I want, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Wednesday morning, right? So um, so that, that way it blocks and nobody else can book time for me. Um, I'm busy. I'm available. How many of you put this meeting in your calendar, this webinar, right? 1130 to 1 o'clock. Like I'm going to be doing the Teach Me Tuesday with Jay. It's on the calendar like nobody else. So that's your time each week for digital marketing. Maybe you could all go to your calendar right now and say, um, well, you know what? Tuesdays from 1130 to one is, was a good time for this. Maybe Tuesdays from 1130 to one is the time I set aside for learning and building and growing my digital marketing strategy, right? Like just put it in your calendar, time block it. However you use, just block some time. And then Instead of trying different strategies, like this week, oh, I'm going to do Facebook ads. And the next week, you're like, oh, those Facebook ads didn't work. I'm going to try uh, email marketing. I'm going to send out an email. Uh, that, that didn't get a lot of response. Um, maybe I should just go try to make some connections on LinkedIn. Um, all right, that didn't work. And, and every week, you're trying something new. Just step back again. Know your customer. and Prioritize what you think will be most effective and then get consistent at it. Try it for a month. Try it for two months, try it for three months and learn, learn what works and what doesn't work. And then if you need to, if you have a staff, an employee, um, outsource some of it. Say, hey, you know, you seem to be pretty good with social media or you seem to be good at writing. I like the way you write. Um, maybe you can start working on uh, sending out a weekly email for me. You know, outsource it. You guys have uh, staff. If you don't have a staff, you have somebody. There, there's somebody out there that can do it. You can even go to a freelance or you can go to a freelance site like Upwork or Fiverr, although you have to be careful with the quality sometimes. But um, uh, there are graphic designer freelances out there. There are pr lots of products and tools and services out there where you can actually outsource it. Um, and if you if you need recommendations or you know, uh, tips or tricks or help choosing, uh, an agency or a freelancer, uh, book a time with me. I'm happy to sit down and talk to you about that and, and help you, um, with your outsource. If you want to outsource any of that stuff, it doesn't have to be me. It could be anybody else, but, um, but I'm happy to, happy to help point you in the right direction or, or at least answer questions. Yeah. So, and I've said this a few times through this, uh, through this workshop, um, not to try to jump into everything at once, uh, but be consistent. That's what I was just saying on that last slide. Like try it for a month or two or three, take small steps so that you don't bite off more than you could chew. And then just try to accomplish one aspect before moving on to others, you know, give it some time to know if something fails or works. Um, so here are five mistakes to avoid when you're trying to get consistent. One, if you don't have a strategy, you don't know why you're doing it. Uh, and what you're doing and who your customer are and you just really 
didn't start at the at the foundation, um, you know, you're you're going to be stuck. You know, so don't do anything without knowing the the who's and the why's and the what's. Uh, so learn that first. Uh, just looking to see if there are any open questions. Nope. Okay. Um, don't be afraid to outsource a task or partner with a freelancer or agency. Don't be afraid at all. Uh, we outsource a lot of digital marketing uh, projects. Uh, we have companies, we have partners in New York, Massachusetts. Um, I have a partner in the Philippines, Ness, who's awesome. She helps me with a lot of like virtual assistant tasks. Um, New Jersey, Heather, sorry, I'm not ignoring you, but Heather's actually, Heather's pretty much staff. Um, but I outsource things to her. She's a contractor. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to outsource certain things or let somebody, you know, if you have a graphic designer or a video editor or, you know, uh, you know somebody that's run Facebook ads or does, you know, you outsource work all the time anyway. You know, if you have, um, you know, if you have a sign guy or a sign person, a sign company, right, you outsource that, you're not going to go build the sign. You know, if you have software that you use for work, you didn't write the software yourself. You outsource that you bought software to make your life easier, to make your job easier, to run your business. All right. So you, you've, it's, it's no different with digital marketing. Don't be afraid to outsource or spend some money and invest and try to, you know, don't try to do everything yourself. And then again, it's not enough to do digital marketing for a few weeks and accept, expect successful results. I tell everyone, like if you're not willing to put in six to 12 months, usually more like nine to 15, but six to 12 months, if you're not willing to put, put in the effort, invest the money, invest the time um, for six to 12 months, uh, don't ex don't expect good results. Like you know, it's, it, there's a lot of testing and measuring that's going to take place. If you're just like, oh, I'm going to run this Facebook ad for a week and see if I get a, a click. All right. Well, if you don't get a click, you're going to think, oh, Facebook's terrible. I'm never going to use it again. It's the worst platform ever, and my customers aren't on there. And you start making excuses. And you won't know. You won't know what's out there after a week. Maybe your image wasn't resonating with your audience. Maybe your copy wasn't re resonating with with the image, maybe the market and the message didn't match. Maybe, maybe you should have run the ad on, um, maybe you were on the wrong platform. Maybe it wasn't Facebook, maybe it's LinkedIn, but the same ad. So you have to really test and measure and, and try to learn, but you, you're not going to know from just a couple of weeks of sporadic, uh, sporadic, uh, efforts to, to know if something works or not. Putting out poor quality content. Here's what everybody puts. Anybody who was on the lens method will remember the picture of the crazy looking girl who thought on the first date you should already be picking out names for your future children, right? So make sure that the that the that what you're putting out matches what your target audience wants to read. It doesn't, poor quality content doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the best piece of content ever written, you know, and, and it's all the, all the I's are dotted and the T's crossed and, and that it's, you know, you're using, you're using very unique, specific, great words. And, you know, it doesn't, that, that's not what I mean here. What I mean by um, poor quality content is if all you're putting out are things that your audience doesn't really care about, you're, you're going to fail. Uh, it's a big mistake. Um, what you should be looking at trying to do is instead of buy me buy this do this just everything's about selling or your products or your services maybe start writing about things people are interested in like how it relates things that relate to your service but maybe not be your service um you know tom tom i'm going to come back to you tom polera so travel agent well don't write about all your specials your cruise specials right now but maybe five reasons well not right now why five reasons why going to um Spain would be the greatest vacation of your life. Like that might be a great topic. I mean, people aren't they're probably canceling trips to Spain or, or not allowed, not allowed to go to Spain right now, but, but you get the point. I picked a bad, bad example with Tom right now because uh, people aren't able to travel out of, out of country. But, but if you can put things, uh, put articles out like that, like, you know, um, 10, 10 things to see while you're in Spain um, people might, that's good quality content, but, um, 10 reasons why you should choose JVI mobile to be your, 
digital marketing agency in a blog post or in a Facebook post is, is poor quality content, right? Like it, it should be about, um, you know, maybe why, why you need to use this strategy or, or, or maybe why, um, you know, just content that isn't about your products and services and why people need to buy. If it's all about you, 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 buy me, buy me, buy me, do this, do this, that's poor quality. Think about things that your readers want to interest and know your audience. And then the fifth mistake to avoid is uh, if you're not tracking your efforts. You constantly want to track results so that you can always make tweaks. You can test and measure, test and measure, test and measure, and improve that strategy over time. All right. We are coming down to the question and answer and the end of this whole thing. All right. Here are some signs that it's time to get professional help. And again, when I say professional help, that's not the pitch of why you need to, you know, go to an agency like JVI Mobile or another digital marketing agency in Greensboro necessarily. Just just some ways that, that it's time to get professional help, um, even if it's just getting questions answered. But there are people out there that are able and ready to help you reach your goals. You don't have to do it all by yourself. So here are some signs. If you're not achieving the results you would like, um, maybe you're not you're not testing and measuring properly. Maybe you need to learn how to do that better, or maybe you need somebody that can help you with that. You can't time fine for dig, time for digital marketing. That's like I said, like I said earlier, that's that's like number one for everybody. Oh, I can't find time to do this. I don't have time to do this. Well, if the house was on fire you'd find time or find that, that, you know, find time to call the fire department or find your uh, your fire extinguisher if it was a small fire, I suppose. Um, you'd, you'd, you'd find time. It's important. You want to grow your business. If there's just not enough hours in the day, if you say that to yourself all the time, then maybe you need to reevaluate some things. Uh, number three, if you feel like you lack knowledge and expertise, um, you know, Professionals have that. So we could tap into our brains and our skills and we could help you to be successful in the digital space. If you don't really know what you're doing, a digital agency will be able to help, even if it's just answering your questions again, like just, just taking some time to answer what's important to you or what you're struggling with or what you don't know. And hey, guess what? Lots of agencies, which is why I started howto.agency, lots of agencies are putting out how-tos and tutorials and tricks and tips online. So go to Google, go to YouTube, right? Go to howto.agency, not really yet, but over time. Uh, we have a group on Facebook. You're more than welcome to, to join. It's called the Digital Marketing Assistant, the DMA group, Digital Marketing Assistant. Um, it's on Facebook. It's easy to join. And we post articles and content and tips and tricks, and we're always available to answer questions. I monitor that that group personally, Heather monitors it, uh, you know, the digital marketing assistant. If you don't really know what you're doing and you want to learn, go in there and ask a question. We will gladly provide you a bunch of free resources, tips and tricks. So digital marketing assistant on Facebook. Um, and if you have an old fashioned website, uh, you know, you're not going to, you're going to lose rankings. You're not going to get the great rankings. Uh, make sure it's optimized for mobile devices. It, update it. It'd be time to update it right now. Um, if it's if it's old, yeah, it might be time to get help and get a new one. Um, so anyway, uh, if you are ready to take your digital marketing to the next level, as you can call me. Phone number's right there. That's my cell, 910-233-4484. Note the Wilmington area code. Had that number a long time. Um, just email me, j at jvimobile.com. I'm here to at, answer questions. I, I, we've got this till one o'clock, uh, and I will be happy to answer. There's a, there's a thing at the bottom for questions. If you scroll down a little bit below the presentation, uh, you can ask questions in the comments right now if you have any. Um, you can go to howto.agency. Uh, if you know somebody that is that owns a digital marketing agency, call them up and say, hey, this is what I struggle with. Do you have any free or low cost or ways that you can help? You know, And then what you'll find is either you'll figure out how to do it well and affordably, 
or you'll realize that, hey, you know what, just how much would it cost to, you know, for me to pay you to do this for me? So those, that's usually one of the two things that you're going to, you're going to come back to, but I'm looking for questions. I'm looking for comments. Um, I think everybody fell asleep. So uh, give me a thumbs up or a smiley face if, if you're still alive and still paying attention to what I'm saying. Maggie, thank you so much. Lisa, thank you. Ashley, awesome. Amy, great. Russ, thank you so much. Chris, all right, we're going to talk Thurman Munson later. Heather's still out there. Good, well, you, she's, she's required to be. Uh, Tom, thumbs up. Yay, Chris. All right, cool. All right, well, everybody, I don't see any questions coming in. I'm going to, let's see if I can bring Holly back up on here. Hold on a minute. Figure out how to do that again. Holly, are you still out there? I know you turned your camera off. And I'll give you a minute to come back on. I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. Great. So people are saying thank you. Yay. Great webinar. I don't see any questions, but did do we have anything else? Did you see anything that I might have missed? No, just want to want to say thank you to Jay for taking his time to do this presentation with us. Um, not only this time, but for last time as well. We we love hearing from you. So so thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Thank um, you. And if you guys are interested in some more training, check out check out our website. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, if that's it, Holly, thank you and everybody at GMA. And um, I'm looking forward to whatever we do next, whenever that may be, some point this year or later in the year or whenever it is. And uh, like I said, guys, I will make sure that everybody gets that, that booklet, that 57 pages with the slides and some checklists and some additional resources. Um, and uh, and then uh, the video will go up as well. And the replay, you guys will all get a link to the replay as well. So I'll be able to listen back and make sure um, audio was okay. But it seems like everybody was. So Holly, you're getting some thank yous in there too. So thank you again for all you do. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop the broadcast. I hope everybody has a great day. Stay safe and stay healthy.